I'm Richard Seabrook. I'm the executive creative director at the 10th Man. I did my visual communications diploma in Waterford uh, for three years. They didn't do a degree show at the time, so I then went on and finished out in Limerick. So did one year there and got a 1-1 and then came to Dublin in 1995. Um, I went and did visual communications, which is kind of like graphic design. Um, did that for four years in college, uh, came in to Varden Associates at the time, so learned how to do packaging, then went to the identity business, learned how to do branding, then moved over to a couple of other businesses where, you know, it was all about graphic design, branding, retail, FMCG, all of that. Um, but I was always fascinated by the connect and where my brand design was actually meeting Pip the public. So left that entire industry and went over to um, social media, PR and digital. Um, and then the last part of it was experiential, so moved to Modern Green, um, where I worked for two and a half years. Um, in my other life though, since I was like 12 years old, I was running um, school discos, then techno clubs, then uh, small creative events, then big creative conferences. So I've always had this work and play, um, but they've always been up to the tent man, they've always been kind of separate. So I made a decision when I left uh, my last job in 2017 that I wanted a job that we could do both and everything and everything under one roof so there was always this sense of you know bringing everything that I'd learned into one place so um, yeah like my journey has been very eclectic but I feel like right now it's about bringing all of that knowledge and experience into one place um, and you know being able to solve a brief top to bottom is really interesting to me and keep that idea on the table. Average day is seven o'clock start, get the kids to school, get to my desk by nine, usually check in with the team, um, find out what's going on, um, and then really just work with the kind of the head of functions. Um, so like the head of uh, content, the head of creative, head of film, head of connect, and the head of culture and insights, and kind of just start to work out what needs done. Um, we've got a very busy dance card all the time. Sometimes it's of clients making, sometimes it's our own making, but you know, um, we do thrive when, when we're busy. Um, but yeah, like it's a full day. I would say I finish about six, I go home, uh, have some tea with the kids, and then get back to my desk till about 11. And that would be a normal day. Kaleidoscope came out of, um, it came out of a need, I suppose. I've got a about to turn 11 year old and a nine year old. And, you know, uh, there's a big difference for me having gone to all of the big festivals and traveled internationally for festivals. And, you know, there was always family friendly festivals and they were always kind of, to me, there was a, always a compromise. So there was festivals for kids and families that felt like they were kind of, uh, not of great sort of interest to families, to, to mums and dads, but then there was family friendly festivals, which were a bit of a compromise for the kids. They'd be dragged around fields and not really, un, you know. And I always felt there was this tension between the parents and the kids. Um, so we started working, um, I had this idea about a family festival, um, which was actually about non-compromise for everyone. So luckily, uh, we share an office with Fuel here. They had uh, relationships with Rusborough House. They were interested in the concept. Um, and it came to fruition like in four months from start to finish and had 15,000 people. And we were on track to absolutely smash that this year, but um, maybe, maybe next year. It's massive risk and there's three years probably to prove the concept. And we proved it really in year one. And, um, even sponsor levels for year two were far more significant. Um, but the also the, the thing about it is it resonated far, like it, people really invested into it. Every tent went home, our um, bin and recycling was best in class. And this was all because of the people invested into it. Like it wasn't us, we just created the site for it. So I think we were aiming to double the footprint this year, but not double the size. Um, so that people would even have more room to breathe. And like you're talking about a massive site, so um, and we and we have a cap on what we will grow to, but we potentially might move to two weekends. Go old Coachella on it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think that the way I work is that I'm always on. So like if we work with a client, um, I always I, 
I think it goes beyond even a collaborative partnership. It's very much down to trust. And that's that kind of a two-way trust where, you know, the more they share with me, the more I think on their behalf. So I'm always thinking and joining up the dots of what I see around me or what, you know, um, little nuggets of information or here's an innovation there and seeing how I can stitch that into the work that we do. But I'm also really interested in where our work meets people. Um, you know, I've, I'm fascinated by culture. Um, I like the idea that we, um, you know, are taking mindfully from culture and being inspired by culture and people and community. Um, and we're able to then bring that back. So like you never stop really thinking, um, but it's always with a sense of, you know, imagine if, like imagine you put that with that or that person would be great for that. Or imagine if we just tweaked the dial on what we're trying to say by 5% it would sound totally different or so there's always this level of kind of um, always thinking creative block yeah well everybody does but like go for a walk and um, you know bring the dog put on a podcast or do some cooking and or you know go to bed early and suddenly you'll crack it like it, if it goes I've always had this thing about once it goes into the back of my brain, it will get solved. So, you know, create a block is something you just work through. But yet sometimes, <clears throat> you know, if you're under a bit of pressure, you know, it does feel like you're sometimes a magic unicorn and those ideas need to come, but um, they always do. Um, and I think that, you know, our team are very collaborative and we work well off each other. So you can bring 20 ideas to a table and walk away with that good one and we will mould it, but yeah, um, sometimes you just have to walk it off. But like I'm inspired by all manner of people. I just like people that do. I just like people that get off their arses, you know, do what they're gonna say to do, they're gonna do. People that do it and then iterate it. Uh, I like people that go beyond what they think they can do. And, you know, I try to push myself that way and sometimes it works and sometimes it blows up my face, but you know, I will always do that drives me is the ability um i i feel like i'm i've still got my younger 20s brain in my body i in my head i i get out of bed every day feeling like i can make something new um every day so and whether that's a new connection whether it's a new piece of work whether it's you know to do something that i didn't know i was capable of doing or just to make um you know, new connections in new and interesting ways. And I love that uh, ability that technology gives me and my creativity is, and, you know, my um, my hustle. Um, I've, I wouldn't be very kind of pub outgoing publicly, but, you know, in email or um, other means, I'm very much like, if I want to connect with someone, I'll just go out and do it. And, um, you know, I find the democratization of media incredible. Like I've put together entire shows, not having talked to anyone, um, just through email and I've put on festivals through email. And I've... an email is an incredible thing because you send an email and it has to be acknowledged. It can, it can be ignored, it can be trashed, but it has to be acknowledged. So if you write that email with care and understanding and a real reason for why you're writing that email and who you're writing it to and a bit of a reverence to why you're actually getting in touch in the first place um, and you do it politely and with energy you'll generally get a polite answer and it might not always be yes we'll do that thing or whatever but it is always a sense of you know you are having a two-way conversation it's just on a different terms but I'm allergic um, to conversations that go nowhere and you know this idea if there was a dinner table of 20 people and you have a brand new idea that's never been seen by the world at one end of the table there's no way it'll end up getting past the last person because it'll be chopped up and eaten and dismissed and so I have a big belief in just get it done and then ask for people's opinion.